in case I forget, because sometimes I do, is Happy Thanksgiving. Now, we're not scheduled to have a chat in December. I take December off. I only work 11 out of 12 months. That's not true, but, um, <laughs> but I do want to make sure that I wish you a Happy Hanukkah and a Merry Christmas. So uh, Happy Hanukkah, Merry Christmas, and I'm sure I'll probably find some way to get in front of you in December. Now, there's a lot of information here. I've allotted 60 minutes. Probably don't have time. I tried to take all the questions that I received. I tried to build them into the presentation. You're going to probably have more questions. We may not have time for that. What I would ask you to do, write down your question, send it through jkvlive at johnknox.com. And then we will get back and we'll put that out there, whether it's through directly responding to you, putting in the Village Weekly, or all of the above. If you have um, calls, we receive calls at 386-456-1558, text messages 386-507-4236. <coughs> Excuse me. I went on vacation and, of course, I came back with a cold. Um, Val, everybody of Village Alert, please do not opt out of Val. Now, it is my fault. We have worked very, very hard to enhance the entertainment and resident services, the entertainment that we've had. And we've taken entertainment that we normally would charge for, and we've provided it at no charge to you. We've been wanting to do that for years, and we, have, and we finally have somebody who happens to agree with our philosophy, and I wanted to make sure you knew that it was free. When it's free, come. So a lot of the entertainment that we have and the feedback that we've received has been fantastic. I have heard that some of you want to opt out because you're getting those village alerts and it's on the entertainment. Don't do that. I'll stop it, okay? I'll stop sending out the free alerts. You can find those in the uh, Village Weekly. They're tagged in red, free. So please read the Village Weekly in regards to which entertainment is free and which is not. Um, we also, when we have storms, you know that. If you didn't know, we're in excess of five and a half inches currently. So that's why the lake looks the way it looks. Occupancy. And as I'm going to probably start speeding up a little bit. Occupancy is currently 78%. What's occupied and sold is 82. Cottages, 251 out of 84 with 17 deposits. So we have 17 people waiting to move into a cottage. Apartments, 59 out of 100. We have one additional deposit, so that's 60 out of 100. Um, we've, we've talked about that. We'll come back to that. Villas, 71 out of 74 with three additional deposits. So those are sold. Valencia Landing, 40 out of 68 with two additional deposits. Oakview Suites, 42 out of 49. You're going to say, wow, what happened to Oakview Suites? Well, some of your neighbors realized that they needed additional services. We were able to be convince them they need additional services. That's part of what we do. Um, as your needs increase, you have the, that availability. And so we have been able to get about five people to move. So where do you think they came from? The apartments. Many of them came from the apartments. And Majestic Oaks, 120 out of 135. First thing you're going to catch is, Joe, you was 120. Why is it 135? we opened up an additional wing at Majestic Oaks to be able to accommodate more residents uh, because we're, our staffing is as of such, we can do that. Now, if you haven't heard, where do you fall? Number one, absolutely. For the last two years, we were number two we don't know what happened to number one, but they slipped to number two and we moved up to number one. That is a tremendous accomplishment, not only for Majestic Oaks, but for John Knox Village, our organization. Um, there's a lot of work that goes into that. That said, you know, when you're on the top, you know, which, you know who's got a, you got a target on you. We continue to work very hard to provide the best possible care in all levels of care. This is just one of the metrics that is objective uh, through Newsweek and Statista, 
Statistica, if you will. Um, what I've done is it tells you the top 10. You'll notice the only other life care facility or continuing care retirement community is Larson Healthcare there in Fort Myers. Um, and our, they're not our sister, but John Knox of Pompano Falls comes in at number 16. Um, but that is to be ranked and to get into the rankings is an accomplishment. To be number one is quite the accomplishment. So congratulations to the um, staff at Majestic Oaks and of all of John Knox Village because it takes everybody. And um, what I did is I included the link down below. That's why that's in green. If you go to this presentation, you go to the link and you can click on it and you can check anybody you want to check in regards to that. Find out where your friend's health center is located. Was that Caddy? Sorry. Um, what I did, I did a little, I, I, my updates changed a little bit. Typically, I kind of go through an update. What I did is I decided to do my updates by departments, and it's a little bit. So if you have some good feedback, please give it. If you don't have any good feedback, okay, just keep it to yourself. Um, sales and marketing, we're in our final interviews. Um, I know all my interviews are scheduled for early next week for development, business development liaison, then a third sales counselor. In October, we had eight sales. In November, we have five so far. So we, we continue to make nice headway. Um, you've heard a lot about this. Uh, we heard that the portal is slowed down. That's due to the number of pages and the volume of information that's on the portal. So Shannon is going through and removing information that doesn't need to and, and hopes to be able to speed that up. We have a holiday open house on December 7th. We're going to highlight where our need is, and that is in Valencia Landing. A reminder, we're offering $20,000 off of cottages and apartments through December 31st. That is new sales. And then we're offering a 10% military discount on entrance fees up to $40,000. Here's the interesting thing that we started. Well, we kind of started it as a temporary thing in May. Thus far, as of this date, we have 11, 11 people that have taken advantage of the 10% military discount. I'm just going to tell you, that's incredible because typically in my life, if you, in my past experience, if you get two or three or maybe even four, you're celebrating. 11 in less than a year is pretty incredible. So we're, we're extremely pleased with that. Administration, straight from the mouth of Vicki Stein, my boss. All right. Good. So um, we did an audit on your files, independent living files. There are 142 resident files that are missing at least one or all of their advanced directive and authorizations form. 142. Don't tell me some of you don't have a need to go see Vicki. She's sweet, she's got a great personality, she'll treat you wonderfully, but please go back Look at your forms, even review your forms. And if you have questions, she will take your call. She'll let you know if you're one of the 442 that doesn't have updated information. This is critical because if something happens to you, we don't have that information, who gets into your unit? Nobody. Not because any, if you have a power of attorney on your passing, that's gone. We would have to then know who the executive of your estate is, and we have to know their powers. As crazy as it is, we have, to, we have the rules. Now, on the portal is our policy, and we can push that to the front if you'd like, but that's, that's a critical piece. The other thing is she's getting ready to send out the uh, residency certifications for purpose of ensuring ad valorem taxes. That's, that's, that is important. I can tell you that we got our recent tax bill and it went up by $80,000. Ouch. Um, when leaving John Knox Village overnight or longer, please complete, complete an out of the village form. And then when returning, let us know that you've returned. Because if you tell us the 15th and you return on the 13th, we all of a sudden start seeing activity in your unit we're now, we're now concerned, and we will, we'll send somebody there. We're not going to send the SWAT team, 
but we will send somebody there. Um, and if you're there, just let us know that you've got, you've, you've got home early, and that will be very helpful to us. Regular business hours, the reception office will make copies and send and receive faxes. This is a price change. If you need a copy, copies are now going to go to 10 cents a copy. I'm told they have been 5 cents a copy for 37 years. So, I know we're doubling the price, but bear with us. It's 10 cents a copy. Faxing is still a dollar a page. Um, please don't leave, <coughs> excuse me, and please don't leave checks in the main reception office. Put the checks in the secure box outside the administration door. You should all know where it's, it's at. And it's around the side. It goes down the back hall. Um, please make sure it gets there because if you slide it under the door and then it comes missing, there's no way to keep that secure because sometimes there are other people that come into that office. And new resident directory. New resident directory, printed directi directory, if you want a printed copy, is available mid-January. We update the resident directory every single month. So a couple of days after the, first, after the end of the month, there is a resident directory that's current, available on the portal for your review. But please keep that in mind if you want a, uh, a published copy or a copy of it. We only do that a couple of times a year, and it's January and July, I, think, I believe, is when we do that. So it won't be available until mid-January. I know I would have done something incorrect, and I'm going to hear about it, but there you go. Scams. Can, can we say we've talked enough about scams, please? Can we say we've talked enough about it? If you have any doubt, call administration, give it to us, let us look at it, and let us investigate it. You know, you hear them all the time. We, we, in fact, somebody just got one recently in regards to they were looked up by, it looks like, a very legitimate attorney for um, an inheritance. Now, it's a great, not a great inheritance, but sound like a scam to you? Smells like one to me. However, when they offer money, uh, that, that makes it all that more tempting. And tis the season for it. People are just spending. It's now the holidays. People are using their credit cards. People are going all over. They're not tracking things. They're not spending. They're not being as diligent as they should be with some of their expenses and checking on things. And this is the season that it really ramps up. So please, if you have any questions, we may go ahead and stick this in the uh, Village Weekly just, just as a reminder. Safety protocols, we've talked about this many, many times, and I can't stress this enough. Again, this is one of the other reasons why we don't allow guests by themselves on campus or family members on campus without the resident being in the dining room, which I'll get to in a minute, is if they go, all, they can go anywhere they want, and nobody will ever really know. With that, please make sure you lock your door at night. When you're, even if you're in your unit, lock your door. When you leave your unit, lock your door. It's not that we're an unsafe community. We just can't verify and say that everybody who's on campus is, doesn't have some type of malicious intent. I hate to say that, but we don't always know what somebody's intent is when they're coming on campus. And if we know that there's something, and we believe there's going to be some kind of issue, we'll address it. Sometimes it can be too late. So please make sure, don't answer the door unless you know what it is. I can tell you, third floor Audubon, you guys are fantastic. You're fantastic. I was going and doing Centrix, and I knock on the door. Who's at the door? <laughs> Good for you. That's exactly what you should do. Make me announce myself. Can I see your name tag? <laughs> I think somebody still called security on me, though. I'm teasing. Um, but don't leave your keys where they can be grabbed. Don't leave them on the counter. If you're in an apartment, don't leave them on the counter. Put them, put them elsewhere. And I know you make, like to have them where it's convenient for you. And don't 
let anybody in unless you know they are. And if you don't know who they are and you see them and they've come to your door, call security. It's better to be safe than sorry. Clinical services, I know Nicole is not here, but they're celebrating National Home Health Week and they're also celebrating Nash, or Nurse Practitioner Week this, this week. So thank your home health staff. Thank Martha uh, Cullen for her services. We want to announce Martha has been approved to see Florida healthcare patients. So if you have a Florida healthcare plan, she's been approved to be able to see you and we get reimbursed. Um, outpatient rehab. Um, outpatient rehab is in the process. We've gotten, is creating a boxing program. The boxing program is specifically um, for people with Parkinson's because it helps people with Parkinson's much. And we have, we do have people that have Parkinson's. And while we've had this opportunity before, while we've had this opportunity before, um, we have outpatient rehab creating this program that can be used within our community. You don't have to have Parkinson's to participate, but it is specifically to help slow the progression and keep people with Parkinson's strong. So that's, there's a lot more to that little clip than I put in there, but that's what you need to know. And we just wanna report that home health visits are up significantly this year versus last year. We asked you to support home health and you've done a phenomenal job doing that and we thank you for that. COVID, this is hot off the press, hot off the press. Um, we are doing two vaccination clinics on Monday the 20th and then Monday the 27th from nine to four. They're only offering the Moderna vaccine. It's one of the three that have been approved. Um, it is recommended for anyone who, everyone's five years of age and older should get one dose of an updated COVID-19 vaccine to protect against serious illness of COVID. I'm gonna tell you, it is still around. It'll continue to be around. It's gonna, come, it's gonna be just like the flu, just like the flu. If you want more information, we've included the link down there from the CDC. I don't believe, I think, I don't believe she said that you had to sign up. You could show up if you want, but please, if everybody shows up at the same time, it's gonna be difficult. And they're doing it, if I remember correctly, they're doing it in the clinic but I will make sure she sends out a village alert in regards to this. You have something? By appointment in, yeah. in the boardroom. It doesn't say that. <laughs> it's by appointment and it's in the boardroom. I know that's not what I was told, but it's by appointment and it's in the boardroom from nine to four. Illness protocols. This is every flu season. Now that COVID, you can't, you can't wash your hands enough. Um, if you're not feeling well, stay home for the sake of other people. If you're not feeling well, don't make anybody else join your misery. Um, stay home. Peak of flu season is December to February, but it, the length of the flu season is October to May. Human resources. We normally don't add a human resources. However, there are some nice little um, Things to celebrate here in 2022, we had 398 employees in 2023. We currently have 555 employees. Um, we've been a little busy. Um, with that, turnover in 22 went from 41% down to 23%. Yes. <laughs> Your question is, is Joe, what's the industry average? Industry average normally runs somewhere between 30 30, 32%. That is if you're good, you run 32, 32%. So 22, while 41% wasn't great, it was still better than many of, our, uh, many of our competition. Workers' comp claims, we work very hard on this. Um, last year we had 12, no, 20 claims. Um, this year we have 10 claims. If you know your mod information, our mod rate is 0.81, which we are um, less likely than the average to have a workers' comp claim. And that's quite honestly what we do is when we do that, we get those savings, we pass those savings on to employees through additional increases in wages, which that's been, that's been great to do. 
And we've also created what we refer to as a new team member experience. We've enhanced our general orientation. It happens, every, it happens twice a month. And all the directors and myself participate in that. We, we try to catch people because we know when our turn, with our turnover, most people leave within the first six months. So we try to make a connection, try to make sure that we convey that, their need, uh, our need in regards to them. And it has had a nice little effect for us. So 23%, I'm pleased. And um, the new team member experience, wherever all the directors have been participating, has been a great help in that. Oak Park Pharmacy, they've done 29 MedD appointments. If you haven't, if you have MedD and you haven't looked at that, please look at that. I personal note, I did my parents, and my mom's on one, now on one program, my dad's on a completely another program. They are on two completely different programs. If you don't know what I'm talking about, call the pharmacy, call Callie and specifically at the pharmacy and ask her if she can help you. If you have traditional Medicare, Medicare Part D, that is the pharmacy portion, and see if you can save yourself some money. Special project with marketing. Um, what we're trying to do is create a portal, give you an opportunity to be able to reorder your medications through the portal. There's a lot of hoops we have to jump through to be able to make sure that happens. But to make it easier for you, we're, we're attempting to do that. So Shannon's working with Mitch to try to make that happen. They're updating their over-the-counter medications and supplies. If there's something that you want or you've been getting it, but you want to start using Oak Park, please let them know. We're reviewing service hours, and as we normally do at this time of the year, we work on our top 10 or our top 20 medications. Why would we do that? Because we're in a, we're in a very great situation, whereas if we see a price increase, i.e. last year, it was Eliquis. We knew that January 1, the price of Eliquis was going up. Now, the reimbursement goes up, but the price goes up. So we were able to purchase <clears throat> a considerable sum of Eliquis and create that additional margin because we got it at a lower price, the reimbursement went up, we had it in inventory. Um, Mitch was only able to purchase about nine months of additional Eliquis. And so what we do is we look at what were the biggest movers in the medications this next year we put money aside, we put that, we put it in inventory, and then we use that savings. Um, after all, we are a business, and it is a business unit. So that's kind of the, some of the things that we do with our medications. And we look for the big movers in medications so we can take advantage of that. Campus services, there's, this is kind of jumbled up for Thanksgiving. If you didn't remember or you didn't hear um, the Board of Directors gave their approval to rename the clubhouse at Valencia, the Jacquis Clubhouse. I mention that because you, the, we may stop probably using Valencia altogether and just start referring to it as the Jacquis Clubhouse. For those of you who don't know, Jerry Jacquis was the president and CEO of Riverwood Management, which had managed uh, John Knox Village since 1989. And um, Jerry ran Riverwood. He ran a number of CCRCs, managed a number of CCRCs. In 2018, he retired. Unfortunately, earlier this year, he, um, he, joined, the, he joined the board of directors a couple of years ago. Unfortunately, this year, he passed away. Um, there's no one that has had a greater impact on our community than Jerry Jacquis. And w we thought, as the board did, thought it would be fitting as to name the new clubhouse after him. We don't make that a habit. Barker Center is the first, and now the uh, Jacquis Clubhouse is the second. So you'll see us put Valencia Landing, we'll say Jacquis Clubhouse, we'll put Valencia Landing, but then Valencia Landing will fall off and we'll refer to it as the Jacquis Clubhouse. So the clubhouse is 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. And then the Cranes is a seated dinner at 12 and 3. Cranes, these are some of the questions that came up. Cranes, we have a new menu. Um, there's featured daily and weekly specials, and those rotate off daily and or weekly. 
um, the Jequist Clubhouse, Valencia Dining. Um, we've modified those menus. What we've done is we've kind of been able to track the less popular ones. We've moved the less popular ones off of that, and we've traded those out. We've talked about the free entertainment. We've talked about the Val Alerts. I'll stop it now that you know. Lost and found items. We will pick up, and you'll be surprised if you've lost or you found, if you've lost something, please come check with resident services. If you found something, either hand it, probably hand it in to security because eventually it goes into security and they have a handful of items that people have lost and they've never, nobody's ever come back looking for them. Now, we don't publish what those items are because can you imagine? It's like, yeah, I lost a ring. Can you tell me what it is? Yeah, it's gold and it's got a diamond in it. Pretty general, right? So please, if you've lost something, check with security, check with resident services. If you find something, please turn it in and we'll be happy. Um, we'll see if we can help find the owner. And most importantly, we want to thank all of you and the employees for the donations for Orange City Elementary. Um, that was a tremendous, we do that every year, and I know those families and the kids at Orange City Elementary greatly appreciate that. So that's, that is phenomenal, especially during this, this time of Thanksgiving. Dining, questions that it came up. So hopefully I can explain this well enough. Guests and families are not allowed in dining venues unless they're with the resident, period, end of story. Why? One, it's a security issue. Two, they have no, really no way in which to pay for it. Now, you're, they're with you and they go into the scoop and they have a credit card because the scoop takes a credit card. We're not going to complain about that. Um, if somebody, you have somebody join you for dinner or join you at Valencia, the Jacquez Clubhouse, and have meals, we're okay with that. And if they want to pay, they must do it by a check. We don't have the ability to accept that. When we went into COVID, what we did is we pulled all of that back because we were paying a considerable amount in fees for credit cards. And in fact, we had been doing it for a long period of time and we were just absorbing it. And that's why on monthly service fees, if you want to pay with your credit card, you certainly can, but there's a service charge for that. We'll look into that to see if that's affordable for us to do. What we would prefer is if you have, if somebody wants to go dining, you must be with them. No exceptions. Um, the scoop will take credit cards for guests. We've been asked to see if we can extend the hours of the bistro. That's when we do, we'll, we look at those things that's based on, based on need. If we start looking at it and there's nobody in the bistro that's ordering anything after five, it's not likely we'll do that. However, if everybody decides Thursday for Thursday night football that they want to go to the bistro and the bistro wants to, should extend their hours, we'll certainly do that. So we can do that for certain days and it's solely based upon need. Um, we've also been asked about the ability to make reservations at Cranes. We now have that ability to do that and we'll work on that. In the same light, we've been asked to review our ability to accept walk-ins at Valencia or the Jacquist Clubhouse. Hmm, that's a quandary, isn't it? So we'll do what we can. If um, we, have, we have spoken informally, we will make a more formal announcement by the 1st of December. And so when, um, in regards to when we'll be able to take reservations at Cranes on a regular basis, and when we would be able to accommodate walk-ins at uh, Valencia or the Jacquist Clubhouse. Fair enough? There's a, lot of, there's a lot of moving parts there. We know that there's sometimes it is not when you go into the Valencia and you see that the whole dining room is free and you have capacity. It's we've allocated a certain number of staff over there because we know that we're gonna, we can project a number of meals. If that goes up dramatically, then we need to relocate some other staff. Fair enough? Now, I didn't put this in here, but I wanna make sure that I bring it up, and when, I re put, when we post this presentation, it will be in here. I made a comment last month in regards to 
Your dining account is not a beverage account. I got a couple of emails that wanted a further explanation of that. Fair enough. And here's your explanation. When we come to month end, the, the reason for your dining account is to enjoy your meal, and that will include a meal, entree, dessert, whatever you want, and a cocktail or a glass of wine, whichever you would prefer to be consumed at the dining venue. That's the purpose. It is not meant for, I have money left at the end of the month, and I want to get a couple of bottles of wine to go and a six pack of beer. That is not what that is for. Effective, because I didn't give you a 60 day notice. We did that during the pandemic and we haven't corrected it. I want to make sure that nobody has any issues. So I'm going to give everybody an opportunity. You have a 60 day notice, February 1st, that changes. Now, some people will say, <coughs> excuse me, excuse me. <coughs> there we go. They'll say, Joe, but the rule is, is if I take and take a glass of wine and I can't drink it, I, I can take it home. Yeah. A glass of wine, not a sip. So I don't want to. Um, split hairs over what is a glass and what is a sip. If the intention is, is that you're going to have a glass of wine, three or four ounces, you want to take the rest of it home it's because you didn't consume it, I'm okay. But if you want to have what's ever left in your dining program to go and buy alcohol on your program, that will stop effective February 1. Fair enough? Yes, we have been awfully generous and it has cost us, but there are certain things that we need to pull back on. Again, to be clear, you want to enjoy a cocktail in a dining venue? Have at it. We're good with that. Even Treetop Lounge or the Bistro, please feel free to do so. That's what it's there for. But it is not meant for you to be able to take alcohol to go. That puts our license at risk. And we need to stop it. We need to stop it now. All right, and I'll make sure that gets on here. Facilities, uh, maintenance workers complete 3,200 maintenance work orders a month. That's incredible. And maintenance staff receive 125 calls. You can tell this is Mark. Um, reclaimed water connection, we're waiting. We are required to, for Holly Branch in our northern north extension of uh, the Silverstones, we're North Lake extension, we're required to connect to uh, reclaimed water. We're in the process of doing that. We're waiting on a permit to do that. And with that, we have to shut down a well or two. If you didn't know the old part of the village, we have our own water plant. We're allowed to use 93 million gallons of water a year, excuse me. Now um, we need to, we are gonna need to shut down one of our wells. And so that includes capping off a well and other little things. Water mitigation, wow, this has turned into we have worked with a couple of different companies. We work with Terrace Engineering. We've reached out to Pegasus. Pegasus finally, after conversations, got back to us and said, no, it's a conflict of interest because we're working with Orange City. We have a couple of other companies, CPH in Sanford, along with another company that we've reached out to to be able to do this. I will point out, yes, the lake is full, but as I started, we have received in excess of five and a half inches of rain. So that water has to go somewhere. Um, so we continue to work diligently on this um, and the bids that are coming in to get some of the work are just absolutely crazy. A roofing contractor, and I put another bullet down there and I decided not to put something there because I'm going to talk to you about it. Roofing contractor is Golden Eagle. As of last, as of Monday, that contract has been signed. They're going to start on December 4th. You all know my policy. I don't normally like to have construction in resident areas during the holidays. I am asking, I ask for resident council support and I'm asking for your support to accommodate this. There is no way we will ever get done with this project in any time in the future if I don't cut these guys loose and let them work. Right now, they're looking at starting three commercial buildings 
in December. They're looking at the apartment building, the Barker Center, and that Majestic Oaks, along with a crew to do residential roofs. We will keep eyes on it. We will keep close, close contact on them. They all have level two background, um, background checks. They will all have their own badge. They're required to wear their badge. It'll have a big L2 that they've had a level two background. It'll have their picture and their name. But we don't like to do it. Like I said, they have 124 days in which to get the work done, something like that. It's supposed to be done by May. And right now, guess when our property renewal is due? March 27th. So that's going to be something that we're going to have to navigate through to see, how, see what we can do with that. So I'm going to ask for your patience. If there are any issues, please let us know. Um, now, this doesn't include everybody. If your roof's already been done, your roof's already been done. But it does include a good portion. It includes all of Holly Branch and uh, I think the inner circle of Floribunda, Azalea, along with a number of other, a no, a number of other units. So if you have any issues, please let us know. And um, hopefully we'll have no workers that walk through the open hole, right? Bears on property. Just be alert that there can be bears on property. If you see a bear, report it to security. Don't approach it. Walk the other way. If you have your dog, make sure you should, your dog should be on its leash and walk the other way. Please keep food and bird seed and sealed containers outside and use discretion early morning, late at night. I know that um, in my neighborhood, we have now just put up bear signs all the time because it's almost like a nightly occurrence of bear activity. Healthcare. We talked about Majestic Oaks. Um, they've opened the 100 wing. They now can claim that even though they are five star, they're also now a five star in staffing. They had dipped to a four, they're back up to a five. We send our heartfelt thanks to Medical Auxiliary for the gifts that they um, approved for Majestic Oaks and for Oakview Suites. And we want to let you know that if you were looking at moving to assisted living and you wanted a one bedroom unit, that can't be because they're all gone. Studio Crafts, this is a quick update. Cabinets and all items have been sent to the out room in the studio. Uh, package items in the room are being unpacked and being placed in designated areas. Bookshelf was supposed to be um, installed yesterday, the day before. The studio will announce um, an opening date shortly. And as of this time, the studio is not taking any donations. They're trying to get organized with the stuff that they have. That doesn't mean they won't do it in the future. They're just not doing it right now. Accounting. I don't know what the number is. I don't need to know what the number is for the employee appreciation program. I just know that it is going to, the number is going to exceed our expectations and that expectations of our employees. You don't always understand, unless you see it, what, what kind of effect that donation will have on an employee's Christmas. Not all our employees are rich or wealthy or middle class. And they all work hard. Sorry. But thank you. I know... I know Tuesday this room will be buzzing with recognition all over the back wall. That's what those little nets are. And I know the employees will run, literally run to find their name to see what kind of recognition they've received. Nothing goes farther than that is recognition. And I can't thank you enough. Give me a second, and then we'll move on to um, Office of Insurance Regulation. That is, that's incredible. Thank you for what you do for the employees. <clears throat> We're in a mist. Um, our third quarter OIR report has been completed. It's been signed. It's been submitted. Uh, we're finalizing our 24 budget. There's a couple little changes we're going to make here at the end of November before we pu push it out in December. And yes, we're not waiting until February to begin 
planning for our audit for 23. Um, we've already started planning for the, 20, the financial audit for 2023. The reason that's important is because we like to have the audit done and completed to be able to share with the board of directors at the March board meeting. That gets approved and then it's smooth sailing and then all the stuff can fall in after that. The cost reports, um, along we can start the other audits, the 403B, which is the, four, the audit on our investing for our employees. That audit is still going on. So um, accounting keeps very, very busy. Okay, 2023 employee satisfaction survey. I may have a couple, typo, a couple typos in here. Um, this is the survey. Now, the survey was in excess of 12 pages. It's been an absolutely crazy, it's absolutely crazy survey. We've made some changes. We hope we've made some nice changes. Some of you will like it, some of you won't. Why did we do it? We did it for a couple of reasons. Is one, we want better information. We took out all the fluff. There's no fluff. So what will end up happening? The satisfaction score will go down. I'm not expecting it will go down, I know it will go down just because we've taken out the fluff. Don't worry, I want you to complete a survey. What gets done, um, what gets the most actions is when you write constructive criticism. If there's something that you don't like and you write constructive criticism, we're good with that. That gets more done than just the score. So said, I think I said, isn't the, 20, the 21st, so it should be, we're gonna have it ready on Monday the 20th, not Tuesday the 20th. You'll get 10 days in which to complete the survey. All your responses will be anonymous. Give yourself plenty of time. I've been through the survey. I'm gonna show you the survey right after this, so you can see it. And we're gonna ask, give yourself plenty of time. 30 minutes, you should be able to be done. We will have paper copies available at the, at the administration office. So see Tina, she will have a copy for you. The reason being is we try to track how many paper copies we let out and see if those paper copies come back. Um, if you do it through the portal, you do it electronically, you can't save it. You need to finish it in one sitting. So make sure you give yourself enough time each person should complete their own survey. So if you're a couple, please complete the survey independently. Don't complete it together. We strongly encourage you to complete it electronically. Why? Because as soon as you hit send, within seconds, we, we have it in a spreadsheet where we get the results and we don't have to hand tabulate scores. The more paper there is, the more tabulation that there is. And we had help last year tabulating those scores, and that took a long time to do. But the quicker you can do it electronically, the quicker I can stand up here and give you this, the results of the survey. Um, again, we talked paper copies will be available through. Now, I like to do this. This just kind of helps, keeps me organized. Pay attention to these numbers. Don't pay attention to the numbers on the questions because out of all the stuff that we did and all the people that looked at the survey, we missed a question. So we had to go in and had to put it in. So background information is questions one through seven, communication services. We have also changed some of the titles. Um, it's activities, events, and then you'll notice amenities and services. You're gonna say, Joe, we've never had amenities and services. We've changed it to amenities and services. Um, we've tried to focus on services and not physical locations. Physical location will only be used to identify the service that's available there. So instead of you saying you're gonna rate Oak Park and what Oak Park looks like in the furniture at Oak Park, that's not what we're act actually asking you to do. We're gonna ask you to evaluate the pharmacy, the physician's clinic, and outpatient rehab. So we've kind of jumped, we've put those services together. Does that make sense? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so as you go down, you have the beauty shop, the corner gift shop, the chapel, spiritual life library, Main Street Bank, the gathering place, and then the library. And then we've called them recreation facilities, where we would normally have the sports plex and bocce ball and um, shuffleboard and all that, all those other little things. 
which we, I want to make sure we, I'll make sure that we have all those. We've broken it down into recreational activities, the fitness center, the pools, and Central Park. And then we broke it down into healthcare facilities and services, which really focuses on Majestic Oaks, housekeeping, security, transportation, maintenance services, grounds landscaping, and your experience, question 32. What we did is we tried to keep the same format for each department. We took, we didn't have, we did away with um, on-campus transportation and off-campus transportation, it's just transportation. Um, we tried, we grounds and landscaping, we tried to get away from your unit and the rest of the community, it's just grounds and landscaping. So here's the survey. Um, these, are, these are just qualifying questions. If it's asterisk, which all of these are, you can't move on in the survey unless you complete it. So if you're completing it electronically, we want to know this. This is the only information that helps us identify what category you're on. Now, why do we do that? Well, if we know that everybody over 90 hates the food in the Crane's dining room, then maybe we, we need to make some adjustments in that. So that's why we look at this and we can break that down into a, a bunch of dis different segments and this is the segments that we use. Make sense to everybody? Okay. Do you live alone with another resident? If you're a couple, you live with another resident. Um, and where do you reside? A villa, cottage, apartment. If you're in Valencia, you're in a villa. If you're in a Silverstone, you're in a villa. If you're in Holly Branch, you're in a villa. If you're in the apartment buildings, Citrus Bay or Audubon, you're in the apartments. Everything else is a cottage. Volunteering. This is just my baby. I just want to know. I just want to know how many hours we're projecting out. Why do I want to know this? Because we have begged and begged and begged resident council to try to help us get good information on people volunteering. Everybody who's on resident council volunteers. If you're on the facilities committee, uh, some type of committee of resident council, you're volunteering your time. But people don't take it. No, no, I'm, I'm good. No, you're volunteering your time. You're volunteering your time to make our community better. I want to know that. No, I don't want to track that. We come to find out on the average, on the average, if we take the average, the average resident volunteers 15 hours a month. 15 hours a month. That's not small, that's a part-time job. That's working two days a week full-time, right? So, and how many of you do it? Well, we know the, the people that answer the question, 57% of you do. So this is just one of mine. So if you took 57% of our population, multiply it by 15, it gives you the total number of, essentially, a ballpark number of the total number of hours that are volunteered, right? So. I get better information in a survey than people filling out the sheets on the desk. It shouldn't be that way. So this is just my little guide. So it's a little pet peeve of mine, and I've gone on long enough, right? Yes. All right, so whether it's in the village, outside the village, on a monthly basis, how many hours do you estimate you volunteer? If you're on resident council, you're volunteering. And sometimes, if you're the president of resident council, that's a full-time job. All right, communication services. If you've never used these, click you've never used them, and we've kind of put lines, we kind of put a bracket around it so it makes it very obvious. The questions are all essentially going to be the same. What is your overall level of satisfaction with communication services? These are the communication services that we, we do. Now, you notice that we put the village alert line in there. We think that's important because if we find out that you honestly don't like it and you don't use it, we're still going to do it, but <laughs> I just can't help but being honest, can I? Um, so when you look at it, those are the things. Now, just because like resident council summaries, it kind of runs into two lines, that's only one issue. Um, resident council and board directors quarterly reports. <coughs> That's one item. Makes sense? So you're either, you've never attended or you've never done it, you're very satisfied, satisfied, dissatisfied, or very dissatisfied. You decide what you want. Now, give me 60 seconds. 
I would rather you tell me that you're dissatisfied or very dissatisfied versus not filling out the question. I want everybody to have an opinion. You ask me about something I don't know, I'm going to give you an opinion. Right? This is something you know. I definitely want to know what your opinion is. If Joe's chats are not adding any value, then dang, let's just stop them. Let's figure out something else that would, would add value and provide more to your, more beneficial in your life. I want you to have opinion. I want you to be passionate about your opinion. Of course, I'd love for you to be very satisfied. However, I know that's not going to happen on every question. But I want you to have an opinion. Please, if you're filling out the survey, fill in a question. If you don't ever use, be honest and don't. You've never used it or attended. Dining services. There's two, essentially two questions in dining services, and what we did is we broke them into what's your overall level of satisfaction with dining venues, and those are the dining venues. We just think that's good information. Instead of going through each question and asking you about the menu and the quantity size and quality and all that other type of stuff, there you go. If essentially, and here, if you don't ever if you've never been through the bistro, well, okay, you've never been to the bistro. But, um, and then what we did is we put employee courtesy in there at the bottom. That was just the, the la only employee, the rest of them are dining venues. Now, the question that we forgot is, what's your overall level of satisfaction with the following dining elements? And that is appearance of the dining room, menu variety, dietary needs, food quality, food quantity, food presentation, service quality, hours, and your overall level of satisfaction. Pretty easy. You know how many pages we took out just by eliminating those questions? So um, we may modify this page slightly just a little bit, but that is essentially what it's going to look like. I may take employee courtesy and put it over on this side instead of leaving it over in the dining venues. Um, but that is what it's going to look, this is what dining is going to look like. Now, are you going to get more questions on dining? No. You go to off-campus activities. Now, we're working really hard on on-campus activities, but we want to also know about what's your overall level of satisfaction with off-campus activities and events. Theater, mall shopping, groceries and supplies, concert, dining trips, and sporting events. Pretty simple. If you don't ever attend those, just put you never attended them. Now you're going to say, Joe, that is a really crappy job of not lining that up. <laughs> right? Well, here's my excuse. It was on the question gets divided between two pages. And even though I cut, I used a snipping tool to put it in there, it didn't turn out really well. Your survey won't look like that though, okay? It'll look better. So there's a couple of questions where I've had to use a snipping tool and I just couldn't line it up exactly. So now I told on myself, so I'm free, free of a bad conscience. Okay, on-campus activities. Um, if you haven't attended these, Fine, if you have, we want to know. We want to know, why? Because we, we have somebody who's in resident services that loves for you to be happy because I want you to be happy. We all want you to be happy. That starts with the questions that you ask yourself when you wake up every single morning. There's only two questions. We know what those questions are because they're the same questions I ask myself. What am I gonna do today and what am I gonna eat? So, I didn't want to be obvious and make them the first two questions, but I put them in the first three. So, what are you going to do today? What are you going to eat? We know that's what everybody asks themselves. So, we want to know. If you don't like some of these things, then let us focus and provide better activities in those particular areas. The first thing we did is, instead of charging for all the events, certain events, we decided to make those free. Amenities and services, and it's this, it starts with the beauty shop, which your overall level of satisfaction with the beauty shop, the appearance, space adequate, equipment, 
service quality, types of services offered, and then the corner gift shop, appearance, space adequacy. Now, I know that everybody who's in the gift shop, every single person who works in the gift shop is gonna take space adequacy and put that they're dissatisfied. They ask me every single year for more space. And every single year I have the same, same thing. I don't have any more space to give you. Now, they think we should move the bank and break through the bank and give them that space. And I'm teasing, I am teasing, but those are the, those are the questions. They're pretty easy, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Amenities to the chapel, appearance, space adequacy, spiritual life library. If you didn't know we had a spiritual life library, I am going to put you on a seek and destroy mission or seek and find. Um, you go see if you can find it. It's pretty extensive and it's a pretty good library. Main Street Bank, the gathering place, as, as you remember, as you recalled. We don't put it as the resident social room. It is the gathering place, which... Man, they have a lot of residents in the morning that that's wonderful to see. I walk in, I can get greeted. I know that everybody's got a smile on their face because they got a cup of coffee down. And then the library, the library here in the Barker Center. So please remember that the library is here in the Barker Center. And that's amenities, pretty straightforward. We didn't focus on the rooms, the furniture, anything else. Recreation facilities, you can see that we just put those all in there, the putting green, shuffleboard, bocce, croquet, tennis courts, pickleball courts, card room, arts and crafts, billiards, and ping pong. We just put those all in recreational activities. Fitness centers, plural, not singular, because we have a fitness center here, and then we have one over at the Jacquis Clubhouse. Um, Exercise equipment, exercise classes, and dance classes. Uh, pools, plural, that's kind of nice to say now. Exercise classes, individual use, pools appearance. And central bark. And do you know that we have, what, somewhere in excess of about 200 pets on campus? It's a lot of pets. Healthcare facilities and services. We classify this as the pharmacy, outpatient rehab services, that's at um, Oak Park, nurse practitioner clinic services, visiting physician services, if you see the audiologist, you see a podiatrist, you see somebody else there, um, resident nurse and medical response. There is no more clinic nurse, it is the resident nurse and it's a clinic response. It's, it's medical response. So we have EMTs on the second and sometimes the third shifts. That's who we're referring to, Re referring to that particular service by those people. And then home health services. We know that we have home health uh, Medicare and we have a home health private. We're just putting those together to do those service. We're not cutting those up because a lot of people don't necessarily know if they were Medicare home health or they were private home health. And really, honestly, it doesn't make any difference. We want to make sure that we do the same excellent job regardless. But resident nurse in the past was known as the clinic nurse. So please make sure you note that change. Healthcare facilities and services. Majestic Oaks, this is the one question that has, a, this is another qualifier question in the sense of if you didn't use Majestic Oaks, your response would be no. If you didn't have a stay there, your response would be no. If you did have a, sp have a stay in the last 12 months, say yes, and then you just answer the question. But if you answer 24 no, you can skip to housekeeping services. And there's housekeeping services. Scheduled cleaning, annual cleaning. Um, we clean these up a little bit. Housekeeping department responsiveness and employee courtesy. We cleaned up some of the other little ancillary things and tried to keep it so it's pretty clean. Security services, we refer to it as a gatehouse, not gatehouse personnel, it's just a gatehouse. Um, patrol, the services that patrol does, emergency responsiveness, and employee courtesy. So if you're gonna go back and look at last year's survey, 
you're going to notice that there's been quite a bit that, that's changed. Transportation, we no longer inner village transportation and out of the village transportation, it's all just transportation. So you don't have to answer two sets of questions. Facilities, um, in this particular case, what we did is for facilities is maintenance services, and then grounds and landscaping. It's not landscaping for your particular, just outside your particular unit, it's landscaping for the entire campus. And please notice, you'll notice that the last question each of here is employee courtesy. And then, would you recommend John Knox Village of Central Florida? Yes or no? Pretty straightforward. Of course, we would love for you to recommend John Knox Village of Central Florida. Um, this is a required question because it's asterisk. And I know I said 60 minutes and I'm at 61, so I'm going to go just a little faster. What he did is we talked about the, we talked about the complaints that we received and the concerns that we had. Um, what I did is I went through each of these landscaping, dining services, and centrics, and I updated these. If you see a little asterisk and you see it in bold, that's what I've updated. Some of the questions that we took out, because quite honestly, those have been, we, in our opinion, those have been resolved. Um, well, the big thing in regards to SOD, why we said that, um, it would be completed by the week of the 6th through the 10th. Um, as we were moving forward, we had concerns about putting down so much SOD and then the amount of water needed. If we had known this storm was coming, maybe it would have changed our thought process. But um, we, due to irrigation capabilities, we divided into two, two phases, 45 days apart. So we did it the week of the 10th, 6th through the 10th, and then we're going to do it again after, right after the first of the year. We're also in this time, because I know many of you have spoken with me, Joe, I have a big patch in front of my unit, in front of my cottage that needs to be addressed. We will get to you. We will. Um, the watering for your unit, your side is a little bit different than other sides, so we will address we will address those, as we will with mulch. Um, I don't want somebody to think that we focused only on Valencia Landing. The uh, grounds does expect to have the rest of the village mulched by the end of the year. Now, trivia question: How much mulch does it take to do the to do the village on an annual basis. How much mulch? How much? 25 tons. We, we, put it, we put it in yards. We didn't put it in tons. We put it in yards. I'm doing the math on that. I think you're a little low. 6,000 yards. 6,000 yards of mulch. That's a lot of mulch. That's a lot of trees. Um, the um, irrigation is suspect. We applied to it at proper times. We got that fixed. We continue to monitor it to make sure that we put down um, the right amount of water and that the zones are running correctly. Um, at least three times in January, they've been canceled. Now, I want to point out, we're in the months where the grass grows slower. So we will adjust our cutting schedule because of that. Now, if you've ever had a landscaping company or a lawn company that cut your grass, I'm going to tell you from November to March, they only come every other week anyway. They come twice a month. At least they do for me, and they've always done that for the last 20 plus years. Um, so these months will be a little bit. Now, is it going to, for a few days, May it grow a little bit more and look like crud? Yes, it may, but we will get to it. It's not a case where we're going to let it go on for weeks and weeks and weeks, but the growth is slower for the grass, and so we reduce our cutting frequency and it allows us to do these other projects like mulch and sod replacement. Dining services, um, questions in regard to effective training program. Stan and his team are working on that. They met with assistant dining room managers on 1025 and 111. They had another meeting this week, and they're reviewing a template and completed one of five sections. They're currently working on uh, section two guest services. And then um, this comes up a couple of times. 
Um, why do we not have a certified nutritionist for dietary specialists on staff to create menus? We do. Her name is Sheila Joseph. She's, and we've, had, we've brought her in to start reviewing our menus um, and work with Raven to provide nutritional accuracy and a little bit more input for people that might need special diets or how to modify that recipe for a special diet. Um, the same thing in regards to uh, diabetes or cholesterol. Um, and I would point out, if you have issues with diabetes and you wanna try to manage that a little bit better and you're on a dining program, call her, let us know. We'll hook you up with her and she'll be happy to sit down with you and help you, help you do that. She is an incredibly talented woman and she's been on staff here for years. So she does, she does an excellent job, but she's reviewing the menus and continues to review the menus uh, for nutritional accuracy and necessary input. Um, the menus, we talked about the menus. Management is considered, this put, manage, has considered scaling back the menu op options and rotating the menu on a cycle basis. That's what was put in there. We're currently in the fourth week of a six week cycle. Comments so far have been, have been positive. We appreciate that. And remember, I mean, we're, we're rotating items on and off on a daily basis and on a weekly basis. There will be a weekly special and then there's a, a daily basis or a, a daily special. And there's a number of things. So we want it, We want to know what your input in is in regards to that. Um, the other one was reservations. We talked about reservations. We're looking at providing, being able to provide those on the portal for you to make reservations for cranes. And then we're going to work on you to be able to walk in at um, the Jackwoods Clubhouse. Temperature at Oak, Oak Tree Grill, we just continue to monitor that. And adequate staff, we continue to monitor and make adjustments as necessary. Centric, okay, this is, this is the big thing. There's been, a lot of, there's been a lot of really moving, a lot of moving parts with Centrix. Why does Centrix cause a problem for us? Centrix cause a problem for our, our, our family in Valencia Landing because all they have is fiber optic. The rest of the village has fiber optic and coax. So if you don't like it, you can go back to coax and you can go to Spectrum and that's on your dime. I have spoken to AT&T. There's, there's a new product called AT&T Air. What essentially it does, it takes a cellular signal, converts it into for you to use Wi-Fi. <coughs> Excuse me, AT&T is not in this area. However, T-Mobile is. So you take a device, put it in your window, you pay, I think they have plans at 30, 40, and $50 a month depending on whether you are a T-Mobile customer or you're not a T-Mobile customer, you can put it in your window and it allows you to have internet throughout your house. It converts the signal and allows you to have internet. The feedback I received was pretty good. I mean, it seemed to be in excess of 250 megabytes per second internet. Now, I, if you have a larger home or if you have a larger living space, you may wanna put, and some of you may not know what the heck I'm just going to say, you may want to put a, a Wi-Fi extender, it's called a mesh, M-E-S-H, system, and what it does is it enhances the internet signal within your unit. I have one in my home. I'm gonna, not that I'm name dropping, but I have two of them and they're both really good. One's affordable, one's not so. But it's called Orbi. And what it is, it's a little satellite that I put in various spots in my house and it speaks to the modem and it goes to satellite to satellite to satellite to be able to extend that range. If you're considering using a cellular signal for Wi-Fi, you may want to consider in, in doing that. I've got other people I'm going to talk to to get information and we may just kind of put a little bit of information out there about what you can do. So I personally spoke, spoke to AT&T. They said it's not in this area. I gave them a number of addresses. They said no. Um, it's not even in my area, uh, but T-Mobile does offer that service via uh, cellular tower. Does that make sense? Now, please be clear. I am not looking at changing television service at this time. The key is at this time. There's a lot of technology out there. One of the technology is, is now that DirecTV offers an app where you can have it go to your phone. 
you put the app on your phone and you can have your TV channels on your phone at any time. I know you're sitting there back thinking, who needs that? Well, I know I've rattled on, but I have a Samsung phone. Not that I'm pushing brands, it's just I like Samsung and that's my thing. It's got a software on there that allows me to mirror whatever I have on my phone onto my TV. Is that cool or what? She's got it too, so very cool. So I can pull up any app that's on my phone and project it to a TV and watch it on a TV screen. That's how crazy, that's how crazy technology is. Why did I bring that up? The days of traditional connections with cable and DVRs and everything else are eventually going to go by the wayside. They're going by the wayside. If you remember when we spoke to Centrix, they didn't offer certain things. They didn't offer a DVR player because that is, and it is, if you look it up, it is old technology. People are not going to continue to use it. I stream everything. That's the way TV services are going to be. And as I get to my next question, um, you have you also have YouTube TV, you've heard of YouTube TV, you have Hulu Live, you have Sling TV, you have all these other TV services that are all streaming TV services. So if you can get an internet signal, you can have phone, internet, and TV. And that's where a lot of companies are going to. Heck, Spectrum now offers, what, cell phone service that can be integrated with your home plan. Bottom line, there's a lot of moving parts. We've spoken with Spectrum, we've spoken with AT&T, Pinnacle, Adcom, um, to determine what kind of services we can offer. Scott's getting me, we, it does appear that we would be able to use four other residents, use a single line of fiber for you to provide, get phone service. The, the more, most important thing is it's a phone service that works through your internet and you would get an internet signal somewhere else through this, through this company f to get phone service. Is it, are you thoroughly confused now? Yep, and you should be, because I am. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of moving parts, and there's a lot of information. The bottom line, we have a lot of companies coming at us with a lot of information, and we're trying to find out who can provide the necessary services that will best serve you. So this isn't going to be something that's going to be decided tomorrow by December 1 or even maybe in January 1. Why I would like to get a January 1, I can't guarantee anything. But we're talking to all these companies to try to get um, some other things. The original agreement, I'm not really concerned about the original agreement. We just had Centrix update, um, install a new head end. You all went through an upgrade and your TV signal should have improved some. I know from some of you it has. I know some of you had problems, but that was on their end, and it should be fixed by now. And if you are still having a problem, it should be fixed shortly. And that will be what, what, how we look at it moving forward. I know there's a lot of questions. There's a lot of information. And um, we're doing the best job that we can to get this done. I'd say any questions, but we're at an hour and 15 minutes, we have a couple of questions. Why is the hobby shop included in the survey? Oh, that's a great question. It will be. Thank you. you know, we've had, we've had a num numerous people look at this, and yes, the hobby shop should be included. Thanks, Joy. Oh, sorry. Good catch. Joe, uh, with Christmas coming up, will you clarify the policy of gift giving to employees? I was told we could do it if they could consume it. Then I was told by your executive secretary that was not true. That is, we did. We did. We kind of went through growing pains because we announced it. I got some feedback. I agreed with the feedback. Is don't. In regards to the way to give to employees is through the Employee Appreciation Program. That's the best way to do it. And I know you all have favorites. And somebody might not be a favorite and might not get any, anything from anybody. 
That's, that's not fair. I don't think that's fair. I don't want to have to sit down with that employee and explain why they didn't get a cupcake or didn't get something. So what we're going to ask, what we've instructed our employees to do, I'm going to go 80s on you, just say no. Just say no thank you, we appreciate the thought, we appreciate you thinking of us at Christmas, but just say no. Thank you for bringing that up as a reminder. Yes ma'am. Um, I have two questions really. Um, the first one is I've been requesting for months that somebody come look at my lawn, my front and my back lawn. I need to have something done with the grass. I have not been successful about having anybody come look at it. Okay. So what do I do? <laughs> Joy, raise your hand. Look. Okay. Go see Joy. I will see you. Give Joy your address. Okay. Because it, if it goes on Joy's list, it gets on my list. Okay, because it's been very frustrating. Mm -hmm. Also, about the internet, if we were to get T-Mobile for our internet, can we cancel the internet here? Or are we gonna have to pay for both? No, you would cancel, that's a great question. No, you would cancel the internet here. Oh, okay, okay, all right, great. No, that's, that's a great question. No, you would cancel the internet here. All right, well, thank you for coming. Thank you for your attending. Thank you for your patience and tolerating me. Um, I wanna wish you a happy Thanksgiving, a Merry Christmas and happy Hanukkah. And we will see you in December. Take care.